Hi, um, everyone. This is actually my second time talking on this subject, uh, trying to get a video out there. Um, I did um, a like, screen recorder to uh, show you some diagrammatical stuff, and um, it wouldn't bloody upload, so um, I'll just have to explain on the webcam. Now then, uh, what I want to talk about is um, Comet and Linen and um, how that coincides with uh, asteroid YU55 um, which is coming um, within 0.85 lunar distances from the Earth on the 8th of November 2011 um, which of course is closer to the Earth than the Moon is to the Earth so how does this coincide with Comet Linen? Well, um, if you look on the JPL website, I'll put the link in the description below. On the NASA.gov, you know, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory uh, bit on the orbital diagram, you can see that Comet Elinin um, is at its closest point, okay, perihelion, um, on I think it's the 20th of October. Now, what happens is the Earth is going to continue on its orbital path and what will happen is okay um, a linen is going to be on its trajectory okay it's coming this way and then the Earth is going to pass through the tail of comet linen now this will be um, within a matter of days from the tw 20th of October when it's at its closest point so like three or four days later we pass through the tail of Comet Linen okay now um, according to my research the tail of a linen is about a million miles long we will be passing through its tail now its tail will comprise of uh, space junk um, a linen has already um, you know it's, it's, it's gone through the Kuiper belt the, um, the asteroid belt, it's picked up shit along the way um, obviously the, uh, it's burning as it gets closer to the sun and there's plenty of shit in its tail and um, you know rocks and shit okay now we're going to pass through that shit alright and uh, we're going to have a meteor shower nothing unusual there you know they could be very pretty and uh, it's all going to kind of burn up in the atmosphere okay but what worries me what worries me is the fact that while this is going on okay the 8th of November um, we've got YU55 which is an asteroid about 400 meters in diameter quite a big asteroid uh, it weighs like 100 180 tons no 108 hang on is it 180 tons or 180,000 tons there's a big difference there's a big big di <laughs> a very big difference in those two figures but I can't remember what it is but anyway well either way whether it's 180 tons or 180,000 tons um, either way it doesn't have enough mass asteroids period do not have enough mass to have a gravitational effect on other, you know, celestial bodies in proximity. Okay. Um, now, what people forget is that these things that come close to the Earth, all these NEOs, these near Earth objects, um, you know, people are very quick to say, ah, but you know, um, it doesn't have enough mass. I mean, comets don't have, um, comets are like ice, okay? Um, you know, asteroid is rock, okay, but they're small. They don't have a gravitational influence. But what people forget is that planets do. The Earth has a gravitational influence. I mean, the moon itself is in our gravitational field, hence why the moon orbits the Earth. Okay, so objects that come close to the Earth can be captured by the Earth's gravitational pull. Um, if they come very close, it can be uncomfortable because you know it. The Earth could pull it to itself. Okay. 
So a collision isn't out of the question. Something that comes um, as close as YU55 is going to come, a collision can't be ruled out. Especially seeing as, you know, with all that um, debris up there, you know, could the trajectory change just ever so slightly? And it only takes so ever so slightly for it to come up into a head-on collision uh, course. Okay, so we've got those two events. We've got YU55 and we've got Comet Alinin taking place around the same time. Okay, well, I was passing through Alinin's tail. Now, I haven't even touched on the subject that some people... I mean, Comet Alinin, I think, is the most controversial comet um, ever. Uh, the, you know, there are people out there saying that Comet Alinin is a cover-up and that it's, you know, Alinin, ELE, extension level event, NIN, NIN, um, you know, Nibiru is near, some people say it's Nibiru, it's a brown dwarf. Um, now, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. The only thing that makes me think, no, it's not, is the fact that brown dwarf is pretty, has a lot of mass, and, um, you know, surely it would be wreaking havoc. Okay, well, is it? Well, funnily enough, you know, if you look at, like, massive earthquakes of late, such as Chile and Christchurch and Japan, these earthquakes have occurred on days of planetary alignments. Now, sorry, yes, planetary alignments, but also a linen has been involved in those alignments. Um, now, is this a coincidence? I don't know, because, you know, when something happens more than once, you begin to wonder if it is a coincidence, don't you, you know? Um, I mean, there's been a lot of crazy shit going on in 2011, and, um, you know, uh, makes you wonder, makes you wonder. Um, now, uh, brown dwarfs are very dark, you know, you can't see it. You can only see them with an infrared telescope. Um, you can't see them with an ordinary telescope. You can't see them with the naked eye. Um, so they, 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 they would need to get pretty close before you can see them. Um, but anyway, besides that, you know, you've got Russia who obviously, you know, they, they're they clued up on space activity. Uh, Russia has its own space program, and the Russian government are preparing for an extinction level event. I'm not talking about war, I'm not talking about nuclear threat or anything like that, I'm talking about um, a, 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 a space event, um, and they're, they're actually preparing for, um, you know, a linen, okay? Um, so are Sweden and so are Norway. Okay, these governments are, 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 are taking steps to um, be ready, to be prepared for a linen. So is li a linen a comet at all? Or is it something more sinister? Well, I'll leave that to you to draw your own conclusion. Um, but anyway, assuming it's a comet, it will have a tail. We're going to pass through the tail. Also, we've got YU55. Now, if we're just passing through the tail of a comet, what's the big deal? meteor shower, that was about the height of it, but YU55, um, yeah, it's going to have its own debris with it, and um, makes me uncomfortable, so I'm putting this information out there because I think that people need to be on their toes, uh, be um, uh, alert around the, you know, sort of look around between the, um, the 20th of October through to like the 8th or 9th of November 2011 um, because uh, it could be potentially bad uh, you might need to have a, a plan in your head, a plan of action um, things might get a bit hairy scary um, or fingers crossed we'll just have a nice display in the sky so at the very least have some cameras binoculars, telescopes to hand so that you don't miss out on, on a lovely pretty display in the sky. Now we've also haven't even talked about uh, Comet Honda, Comet Levy, uh, there are also comets that are, um, that are going to be around about and they're coming quite close. Levy is coming pretty damn close as well. Uh, this is all this year so lots of exciting stuff this year and there's been lots of exciting stuff. There's been um, a lot of activity in 2011, we're not even like well into the year yet. Um, yeah, so a whole lot of um, things.
things forecast for 2011. Now I'm imagining that a lot of it won't come to pass, but um, it keeps us on our toes. Okay, and I'll see you in the next video.